Okay, let's take a look at working with multiple screens in App Inventor. So to begin with, there's some basic things that you should know about in working with screens. First, you automatically get a new screen called Screen 1 when you create a new app. Now you can't rename the actual name of the screen. So we can't rename Screen 1 to something else. But if you want something different to display in the title bar, then you can change the title in the Properties panel. Now when you create another screen, you do have the opportunity to give it a name. So when we create it, you want to make sure that you spell it correctly because once you click the OK button, you can't go back and change the name of the screen. So check your spelling, make sure it's what you want to call it uh, before you continue on. When you are working with multiple screens and you're testing them, whether it's in the emulator or on a device, it's going to take longer. And think about it this way, the designer has to take all of those components and blocks and push them to the phone or the emulator. So it might seem like it's taking a long time and that's just because of the way that you're testing it. They'll change faster when the app is built and packaged. So just be a little more patient if your app has multiple screens. Now let's take a look at how this works before we actually start to build anything in App Inventor. It's a good idea to plan this out in advance before you start building your app so that you can follow the path of how your screens will work. So as we said, automatically you get screen one when you create an app. So screen one by default is always going to be the first one to load. So let's say on screen one, we put a button on there and we set it up with an on-click handler so that when our button is tapped, we're going to tell it to open another screen and we're going to send it to screen two. So what will happen when you tap the button, it's going to open up screen two on top of screen one. So think of it like a deck of cards, right? Screen one is there and now screen two is loaded right on top of screen one. So screen one is not removed, it doesn't disappear. So right now we have screen one in memory and we have screen two open in memory. So now let's say on screen two, we add a button to say, okay, now we wanna go back to screen one. Now this is where a lot of programmers get into trouble. So if we say we have a button and we tell it to open another screen and we're telling it to go to screen one, what in essence happens is screen one is opened again on top of your stack of screens. So this is problematic because you have screen one open in memory, screen two open in memory, and now we have a second screen one open in memory. So now you can see where the processor and everything can get into some memory conflicts because we have two screen ones open in memory at the same time. So following that sequence is not the greatest, it's, it's not a really good structure to go to because then screen one would have a button on it to tell them to open up screen two and now you've got screen one open twice, screen two open twice and before you know it your app is crashing. So that's not a good scenario. What would be a better way to handle this? Let's take a look. So let's say we start out with screen one and we have our generic button that we're going to tap that says to open up screen two. So the same steps, open up screen two, 
right? And it's on top of screen one, just like before. Now, what we wanna do is when the button is tapped, instead of opening up screen one again, we want to close the current screen. So when our button is clicked, we're going to say close screen. And so what happens is when that button's tapped, screen two is taken out of the stack. And just by virtue of the fact that screen one was there all the time, it comes back into focus. Now that you've got the idea of how that works, let's go into App Inventor and build a little app that works this way. Okay, now that you have the basics of how screens work, let's just do a sample app that opens and closes a screen. So I have a new app created here, and the only thing I've done to it is I've added a button and renamed it to be called a generic button. And that's it. So uh, we have a button that we're going to set up to go to screen two. Now, as I said before, we can't rename screen one in the components. There's no option to come over here and uh, rename it. You can see that this is grayed out. I can't get there. But if I don't want screen one to show up here on the app, all I have to do is come into the properties panel and just rename it. So my amazing app. And then it updates the title in the title bar. So what I'd like to do is to set up my button so that when I tap it, it's going to open up a new screen. So right now, I've only got screen one in here and I'm going to click add screen. And I'm just gonna keep it as screen two, but of course, you know that you can change it to something that is more meaningful. You know, maybe like a high score screen or a how to play, or more info kind of a screen. So I'm just gonna keep it as screen two and click OK. And now you can see that I'm working on screen two. And again, you can't rename it here, but we can change the title of the screen. And for right now, I'm just gonna leave it as screen two. So let's set up a button on here and I'm gonna say, back to home and I'm going to rename this and I'm just going to call it back button. All right, now I'm going to go back to screen one. Each screen has its own set of code blocks. So screen one blocks will be different than screen two blocks. So here I'm going to go to my blocks mode. And since I want something to happen when I click the button, I'm going to select that and come in and grab a click event handler. So I want something to happen when the button is clicked and what do I want it to do? Open screen two. Now you'll find those under the control blocks. So under control blocks, you can see we've got close screen, close screen with value, close application, there's open another screen, open another screen with a start value. So this is a basic example. We're just gonna open and close screens here. So I'm gonna choose open another screen and the name of the screen. So I'll grab a text block and the name of my screen is screen two. So let me pull up my on-screen emulator and we'll test this so that you can see it in action. Okay, so I have my button and when I tap it, I'm at screen two and I have my button here to go back home. So I'm gonna come back to App Inventor. Now you can see here, it switched me to the second screen. There's no blocks in here. So a similar thing, I wanna set up my button here so that when it's tapped, it's going to close screen two, which will in turn take me back to see screen one. So I'm gonna click my back button. I'm gonna grab a click handler. And under the control blocks, 
I want to say close screen. I don't want to open another version of screen one. I want it to close my existing screen. So let me go back to screen one here. We'll come back into my emulator and I'm going to go to screen two. We're on screen two and now when I click back to home it takes me back to screen one. So a very basic opening another screen and navigating back to it. And also remember your blocks are different. So this is screen one blocks. If I want to work with anything that I have on screen two, I have to change to screen two in order to get to those code blocks. So that's it for a very basic opening and closing a screen.